Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we will discuss about the previous year paper that is paper of 1998 of WBPSC assistant engineer which was conducted for public works department. So let's start with question number 1. If a 2 inch parabolic arch of span L and rise H is subjected to UDL of intensity W over half of its span, the horizontal thrust at support is equal to. See, we have discussed this type of question in uh, 2016 paper. Okay, uh, now here uh, some things are changed or some things are rather uh, different. That is, it is 2 inch parabolic arch and the UDL that is given that is over half of its span. So, we know that uh, if the UDL is on entire span, then this is the correct answer. Okay, uh, ignoring some part, this will be the correct answer. Now, this is half of its span, so therefore the correct answer will be WL square by 16H. If you are confused about the solution of this, then you can watch our previous videos. Over there, the solution is done properly. And also, this question is very important because uh, numerical type problems may come uh, related to this theory. Okay, and also this type of MCQ can come. Okay, so please note it, note both of them, and please revise it once again. Let's move on to question number 2. The free end B of a cantilever uh, beam of length L is found to be deflect too much and is jacked up to the same level as A. So, this uh, is the point, this is the line where they were confusing you. Uh, jacked up to the point of level A, this is nothing but this is actually the prop according to me as I think that this is the prop properly. If the beam carries a UDL W per unit length, what will the force on the jack? So, we know that the prop reaction is uh, told over here. So, we have discussed it previously also. So, WL to the power 4 divided by 8 EI equal to uh, PL cube by 3 EI. So, if we uh, find the value of P, so we will find that it is 3 by 8 WL option B will be the correct answer. So, if you know any other answer or if you are confused, please respond in the comment section or please reply in the comment section. Let us move on to question number 3. A beam of span L fixed at both ends and carries two loads uh, each P at a distance 1 by 4 or L by 4. I think this is L by 4 from each end. It is found that the resulting deflection produced at the center of the span is delta. Okay, if one load 2P acts at center of the span, what deflection will be produced at each quarter uh, span point? So, this is another numerical type problems and this paper is mainly related to numerical type problems. So, you please uh, practice more and more type of numericals or you please revise it. So, there is no time to practice anymore. You please revise it. Okay. So, here it is told that uh, a beam which carries two loads uh, P at a distance L by from L by 4. Okay. So, if we consider a fixed beam and P acts at L by 4. So, this is L by 4. Now, this is P, this is L by 2 obviously if this is L by 4. So, it is told that the deflection in this beam is delta is equal to uh, deflection is equal to delta. Now, if a load, if we replace these two loads with a single load, this is a numerical type problem and I haven't got the time to solve it anymore. So, uh, here if we put this one, uh, to be x at the center of the span that is L by 2. So, what will be the resulting deflection produced? So, I think this will be same as delta. So, you please check it and you please tell me. Option C I think is the correct answer. Let us move on to question number 4. A beam of span L fixed at both ends carries a point load W at mid span. Again, the same type of question that is a fixed beam. So, number of questions from fixed beam. So, you please note and revise the fixed beam part also. So, that is W at its mid span. Uh, uh, that is L by 2, this is L by 2. So, therefore, at what distance from each support will the point of contraflexure? So, if you solve this problem, so you will find that the point of contraflexure occurs at L by 4. Okay. Option B is the correct answer. Let us move on to question number 5. A fixed beam AB of span L as hinges at distance L by 4 from either end. So, if the beam carries a UDL W per unit length, what will be a maximum bending moment in it? So, fixed beam is given. This is also needs to be solved. Uh, so, you please solve it and you please mention the answer in comment section. That is AB. Well, it has hinges L by 4. So, over here, it, there are hinges okay, from each end and UDL is there. So, maximum bending moment. This is this requires solution, large huge solution. Okay, Solve it and please ask it uh, or mention it in the comment section. So, move on to let us move on to question number 6. This question we have also done it in previous video. Please see it and you please uh, check the answer again. We have solved it. There is less time. Uh, we have to complete the video. So, therefore, uh, six number question. If you don't know, please mention it in our telegram group. I will try to solve it. Okay. 
let's move on to question number 7 abim abc is built at uh, n supports this is again a numerical type problem this requires solution 2 question number 8 applied load vector pre multiplied by inverse of stiffness matrix equal to so this is uh, the correct answer over here options are flexibility matrix displacement vector internal force vector or elasticity matrix that is option a is the correct answer flexibility matrix applied load vector pre multiplied by inverse of stiffness matrix is equal to flexibility matrix option a is the correct answer let's move on to next question number 9 at plastic hinge so we have studied about elastic hinge now this is a plastic hinge so according to me the uh, correct answer will be uh, option d beam is equal to fully plastic moment of the section so i'm not sure but the answer you please mention it if you know the answer correct answer okay let's move on to like uh, question number 10 what is the degree of redundancy this is again a numerical type questions uh, question number 11 all right uh, so, a simply supported uniform uh, beam ABC overhangs beyond B to C numerical type question. I am not discussing the numerical type question. Please don't complain about it. We will try to solve this. But since time is less, so numerical type questions more important uh, questions are those memory based questions. Numerical type questions you solve it. I am providing the paper, the questions only. Uh, okay so let's move on to question number 12 if the collapse load method of designing a structure the collapse is said to take place when so when will the collapse take place uh, that is when ill stress is exceeded first as section option b is the correct answer let's move on to question number 13 for a simply supported beam the maximum ordinate of influence line for bending moment at one third of the span since the bending moment is one third of the span so uh, this question this um, ordinate of influence line okay this influence line uh, so you reply in the comment section because this is also another type question which uh, i am unaware of the answer okay let's move on to question number 14 degree of statical indeterminacy for a pin jointed space frame is given by the following where m is the number of members j is the total number joints including the supports and r is the number of uh, uh, unknown reaction so this is actually pin jointed space frame and remember statical indeterminacy okay so the correct answer is option d m plus r minus 3j option d will be the correct answer so if it is a if it is a space if it is a rigid jointed space frame this is pin jointed so if it would have been rigid jointed then 6m plus r rigid for rigid jointed space frame 6m plus r minus 6j you need to remember this okay uh, let's move on to next question Question number 15, in a statically indeterminate structure, the redundancy must be such as to make the total strain energy minimum. So, this statement is given by, this is the statement of theorem of least work. Option D is the correct answer. Let's move on to question number 16, weakest section in a fillet weld is, now this is a common question, we all know the answer, weakest section is the throat of the fillet. Option A will be the correct answer. Let's move on to question number 17. The strength of welded joint, the strength of welded joint is always less than strength of elements. Option A, okay, it needs to be less than, in some case it may exceed, but that is a rare one. So, I think option A will be the correct answer. Let's move on to question number 18. Uh, ratio of permissible bearing stress in power driven field rivet. So, if you have joined our Facebook page over there, a few days before we have shared a picture of uh, the permissible stresses in bearing, in shear, in tension, all this we have uh, done. So, for field rivets, it is nothing but 270 and that for shop rivets is uh, 300. So, if we uh, take the ratio, take down the ratio, so the correct answer is option B, that is point. 9. Let's move on to next question. Question number 19. Maximum permissible longitudinal of pitch of rivets in compression member. So, in compression member, correct answer is option B 12 T and for tension member, it is 16 T. So, please uh, note it down for tension for compression member, it is 12 T and for tension, it is 16 T. Let's move on to question number 20. Maximum permissible slenderness ratio for a tie member in roof truss. So, this permissible slenderness ratio table, please note it down in your copy, permissible slenderness ratio, this is very important, one question may come uh, from this part, permissible slenderness ratio, another uh, thing is that another uh, one is there, so we will discuss right now in this paper only, because questions have come from there also, so the correct answer will be time member in roof trust, the correct answer will be 350, option B will be the correct answer. 
let's move on to question number 21 diameter of rivet hole for rivet diameter less than 25 mm is usually considered as so we all know that uh, if it is less than 25 mm then the correct answer is 1.5 mm plus nominal dia of rivet and if it is greater than 25 mm then the correct answer is 2 mm plus nominal dia of rivets let's move on to next question question number 22 Transfer surge force on relay from an aortic crane girder when compared with the combined weight of crab and weight lifted. So, the correct answer is option B that is 10%. Let's move on to question number 23. Intermediate vertical stiffeners are provided in a plate girder if the whip plate thickness is less than C. Uh, whip plate thickness is less than we all know that D by 85. Uh, 2 d by 200 is required for intermediate uh, if it is there if this one web thickness is less than this uh, part then we provide intermediate vertical stiffener so obviously it needs to be uh, if it is less than d by 85 then uh, mm, then uh, d by 200 then we will provide the intermediate intermediate vertical stiffeners are provided within this range only so option d will be the correct answer let's move on to next question question number 24 if uh, in a steel roof truss uh, a tension member consists of single angle connected by rivets to gusset plates cross sectional area to be considered for design is so we will consider the cross sectional area as net area of connected leg plus fraction of other leg area option b will be the correct answer question number 25 when the effect of wind and earthquake load is considered in design of rivets and bolts for steel structures permissible stress in rivets bolts and tension rods may be exceeded by correct answer is option a 25 percent question number 26 slenderness ratio of lacing bars for a structural uh, for a compression member uh, uh, should not exceed slenderness ratio uh, structural member compressive load actually the question is compressive load for dl and ll so for dl and ll it should not exceed 180 okay option a will be the correct answer it should not exceed more than 180 slenderness ratio will not be greater than 180 maximum permissible uh, uh, sorry uh, sorry 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 this uh, uh, so this correct answer over here oh sorry this is for compression member for lacing bars for compression member so the correct answer will be 145 no option i have i haven't provided this question uh, is uh, a bit uh, uh, faulty okay so 180 uh, 145 will be the correct answer for compression member lacing bars for compression member okay so this is lacing bars okay let's move on to next question question number 27 maximum permissible slenderness ratio of a member carrying loads resulting from dead and live load so for dead and live load correct answer is option a 180 uh, as I've told the before one, I thought this this was the answer because I've practiced this only. So, and the, for dead end, resulting from dead end live load, it will be 180. And for compression members, lacing bars, it should not exceed 145. This you need to remember, okay. Let's move on to next question, number 28. Projection of a plate or flange in tension beyond its connected wave or other line of support shall not exceed. So, over there, so if it is a plate or it, it is in tension, so, since it is in tension, it will be in 16T. According to me, if you know the answer, uh, correct answer or any other answer, you think it is uh, not correct, then please mention in comment section. Question number 29. Impact allowance for crane girders and supporting columns uh, for electrically operated heavy duty cranes. So, we have done just right uh, now in question number 22 probably. Uh, so, the correct answer here also will be 10 percent let's move on to next question question number 30 cross sectional area being the same most economical section for a column so the most economical section for a column is a tubular section option d is the correct answer let's move on to next question question number 31 for single angle lacing bars thickness of flat bracing shall not exceed so the thickness of flat bracing should not exceed 1 by 14 to length between inner end of rivets or welds okay 1 by 40 multiplied by length between inner and reverse or wells. Option B will be the correct answer. Question number 32. Available tensile stress in mild steel stirrups in EC structure. Working stress method. So, over here the correct answer will be 140. Okay. Mild steel. For mild steel we all know that tensile stress is 140. Let's move on to question number 33. In working stress method of. Uh, so, this is not FCM. This is FCK actually. Working stress method of RCC design, permissible bending compressive stress in concrete. Permissible bending compressive stress, according to me, it is, uh, we all know that it is uh, permissible bending compressive strain, uh, stress is 0.33 FCK. Okay, option B will be the correct answer. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर डेवलपमेंट लेंथ ऑफ ए रेनफोर्सिंग बार सो डेवलपमेंट लेंथ इज ऑलवेज लेस फॉर टेंशन दैन इन कंप्रेशन बिकॉज इन टेंशन वी ऑल नो दैट फाइव सिग्मा एस बाई टाउ बी डी सो इन केस ऑफ टेंशन दिस इज प्रोबेबली फाइव टाउ बी डी एंड इन केस ऑफ कंप्रेशन दिस इज फोर टाउ बी डी ओके सो इट इज लेस फॉर टेंशन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फाइव फॉर डिजाइन ऑफ फर्स्ट सी कॉलम ऑफ ए कॉलम इज रिटेड एज शॉर्ट वन सो वेन कैन वी से दैट इट इज ए शॉर्ट कॉलम इफ द रेशियो ऑफ इफेक्टिव लेंथ टू लिस्ट रेडियस ऑफ जायरेशन इज लेस दैन ट्वेल्व ऑप्शन सी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर Let's move on to next question number thirty-six. Limit stretch method of RCC design maximum permissible compressive strain in concrete. So this is written uh, in IS four fifty-six two thousand clearly that maximum permissible stress will uh, be equal to zero point. Uh, compressive strain will be equal to zero point zero zero three five. Let's move on to question number thirty-seven. The percentage of reinforcement in case of slabs when high strength deformed bars. When high strength deformed bars is used, then uh, percentage reinforcement will be point one two percent, and if mild steel bars are used, then it will be point one five percent. Okay. Let's move on to next question number thirty eight. Minimum diameter of longitudinal bars in a RC column. We all know this answer. These are all parts of IS four fifty six two thousand. Please go through it thoroughly uh, for last minute revision because this is very important. Option B will be the correct answer. That is. 12 mm let's move on to question number 39 to take care of reversible shear in an rcc beam so for reversible shear uh, we need to provide both vertical stirrups in association with crank reinforcement option b will be the correct answer question number 14 pre stress concrete construction high strength high tensile strain is used for pre stressing because uh, because it can uh, retain enough residual stress after initial loss option a will be the correct answer okay Uh, other answers, other options is see less quantity of steel. No, this is not correct. That it always requires less quantity, or it matches with high strength concrete, or it has high rackling. No, option A will be the correct answer according to me. That's why it is pre-stressed concrete. Okay, option uh, question forty one for a ninety degree bend, anchorage value in tension is KD. So, what is the value in case of anchorage value in uh, tension? So it is. 8d or 85 option b is correct answer and in case of u hook this is for 90 degree bend and for u hook it is 16d uh, question number 42 and decrease in strain at constant stress so uh, decrease in strain at constant strain stress it is a stress okay this will be stress decrease in stress at constant strain is relaxation stress and the opposite decrease in strain at constant stress is creep stress okay just remember this question number 43 steel is used as reinforcement of uh, instead of other metals in reinforced concrete because this is a very important question this is very conceptual question correct answer is option c because concrete and steel has same coefficient of linear expansion which means they have the same value of strain okay that's why otherwise if they are different then one will expand other will contract or other will remain at same position so uh, ultimately there will be crack in structures okay so to avoid that we can only use steel with concrete and we can make both work it well in compression as well as in tension okay let's move on to question number 44 reinforcement in an rcc column should be as follows we all know as 456 2000 just uh, check it out so the correct answer is option a not less than 0.8% not more than 6% question number 45 for footings on piles thickness of edge so the correct answer is option d 300 mm okay this is uh, for uh, piles okay option d 300 mm question number 46 critical section for shear in case of rcc beams in framed buildings is taken at a distance of uh, just before corrected answers the video if you have seen so we have discussed it there it is at the face of support and if it is one way shear it is d from edge way edge of support one way shear and if it is two way shear it is d by 2 from face of support okay so option b over here will be the correct answer question number 47 howra bridge rabindra setu is a so we all know that howra bridge is a cantilever suspension bridge option a is the correct answer question number 48 limiting moment of resistance for singly reinforced rectangular beam using fe415 so if you use fe415 then the limiting moment of resistance will be 0.138 fck by bd square 
Option question 49 maximum area of tension reinforcement in beams shall not exceed so the correct answer is option D 4% will be the correct answer question number 50 an RCC column can be considered as a short column if its slenderness ratio is less than so we have just done it over uh, just before some uh, points so RCC column uh, is slenderness uh, ratio you see L by R ratio less than 12 we have done just before that and somewhere it is written that if it is L by R is less than 30 then uh, according to that theory option A will be the correct answer and 30 to 120 is intermediate column and greater than 120 is a long column okay so here option A will be the correct answer according to this theory okay let us move on to next question number 51 for soil sampling boreholes should be stabilized for so if we need for uh, soil for sampling then it should be uh, stabilized for uh, prevention of collapse or sidewalls of borehole okay option b i am not sure option a can also be right because uh, seepage water if it enters this is the cause of this collapse only okay so i think option b you please mention if you know the correct answer you comment uh, on the uh, comment section okay let us move on to uh, question number 52 sand piles are primarily used for so we use sand piles to increase the bearing capacity only ok let us move on to question number 53 standard split spoon sampler is used for so we all know split spoon sampler it is written over here sampler so it is collecting undisturbed samples ok split spoon sampler we collect those samples and then we conduct the conducting the standard penetration test we use we collect those samples ok let us move on to next question question number 54 pile tip and shaft resistance is assessed separately by constant rate of penetration method option b will be the correct answer question number 55 immediate settlement of a shallow foundation in a clay soil occurs due to so uh, clay soil ok immediate settlement it can occur due to breakage of primary structure ok immediate settlement occurs due to breakage of uh, primary structure and other consolidation settlement that is uh, secondary settlement that will occur step by step under loads okay question number 56 two footings a 2 meter by uh, and b 4 meter by 4 meter are placed on a saturated cohesive soil subjected to same intensity of pressure immediate settlement of b so settlement of b with respect to a so immediate settlement we all know the formula q n by es into b 1 minus poison's ratio square into i influence factor so according to this formula si is obviously proportional to b so if we consider b then it is obviously four times the settlement of a uh, option c will be the correct answer question number 57 negative skin friction develops in a pile when so this part question are two types negative skin friction it occurs when the soil is loose or it is uh, recently filled that is one kind and if we consider the mechanics then the correct answer is option c surrounding soil settles more than the pile if the soil settles more than the pile then uh, due to consolidation then we then negative skin friction will develop okay question number 58 sensitivity of a soil can be assessed from uh, sensitivity so you see uh, con uh, UCS that is unconfined compressive strength uh, assessment uh, sensitivity is the ratio of remolded unconfined compressive strength of remolded sample divided by unconfined compressive strength of undisturbed sample uh, so uh, if we uh, other tests are for bearing capacity field density field density is to find out the uh, unit weight of the soil or dry unit weight of the soil whatever uh, static cube and standard penetration these two are to find out the bearing capacity okay now standard penetration test corrections are required for sensitivity but does not measures the sensitivity so i think option d but uh, here it measures the shear strength only okay so option d can be the correct answer check it out and please note the answer Question number 59 in an unconfined compressive strength uh, tests the specimen fails at a compressive stress of 14 ton per meter cube shear strength. So we know that uh, Cu equal to Qu by 2 where Qu is the uh, compressive stress of the specimen. So over here option A will be the correct answer 14 by 2 7 ton per meter square. Question number 60 Rankine's earth pressure theory is least violated in case of uh, this is very difficult question. Uh, Rankine's earth pressure theory I think it's option A cantilever retaining wall question number 61 
coefficient of earth pressure at rest is generally less than 1 but it can be greater than 1 if the soil is so if it is heavily over consolidated then uh, coefficient of earth pressure may be greater than 1. Question number 62, buoyant unit weight of soil is equal to saturated density minus unit weight of water. Option D is the correct answer. Question number 63, passive earth pressure decreases with. So, it will decrease with decrease of angle of internal friction. It mainly depends on the angle of internal friction. Option A will be the correct answer. Question number 64, sheet piles are primarily used. So, why do you use the sheet piles for retaining side of cuts? Option C will be the correct answer. Question number 65, intensity of active earth pressure at a depth of 10 meter in dry cohesionless soil with an angle of internal friction of 30 degree and with unit weight of 1.8. We all know the formula that is half k a gamma h square so if we put the value half into k a now k a value for 30 degree it is 1 by 3 calculate it 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi do not get confused into 1.8 into 10 if you uh, calculate this formula you will get 3 ton per meter square option a will be the correct answer question number 66 active earth pressure of soil is proportional to so the correct answer is option a if it, it is active earth pressure okay option a tan square 45 degree minus pi by 2 or you can say 1 by tan square 45 degree plus pi by 2 both of them are correct okay and the reverse that the inverse is also correct for passive earth pressure okay tan square 45 degree plus pi by 2 for passive earth pressure or 1 by tan square 45 degree minus pi by 2 is also correct answer for passive earth pressure question number 67 ratio of volume of voids to the total volume of soil mass we all know this is a very easy question of soil mechanics volume of voids divided by total volume is nothing but porosity option b is the correct answer question number 68 net effective waterway under a bridge is calculated this is a very a very uh, other type of question this is from bridge or from irrigation uh, i have no idea regarding this question if you know the answer you can comment okay Question number 69, in alluvial streams, the well foundation for bridge parts shall have a grip length of, uh, it is correct answer is option C, D by 3, okay. Let's move on to question number 70, regime cover depth for alluvial rivers is given by following empirical formula, correct answer is option B, let's see regime theory, if you uh, go for details, design process, you need to know the design process because this formula comes from the design process only, so option B will be the correct answer, R equal to 1.34, Q by A fold to the power 1 third. Option B will be the correct answer. Question number 71. Softening point of straight run bitumen is determined by, we all know, softening point is determined by ring and ball apparatus. Option B is the correct answer. Question number 72. Mm, same question has been repeated in question number 72 all again. Option B, you just need to remember this. Question number 73. In laboratory, CBR is usually selected as this is a very important question and another question can come from this part that is CBR value, CBR sample, uh, penetration we take two standard penetrations that is a 2.5 mm penetration here option B will be the correct answer another 5 mm penetration sometimes the value comes at 5 mm penetration uh, then uh, that question you will find in Gupta Gupta and the, over there uh, 2.5 mm and 5 mm what we do if the value if both ways uh, the value for 5 mm penetration comes greater then we have to repeat the test okay that question so you just select you you already know all the answers and you have studied it thoroughly so you just please revise it again and again question number 74 for road repair work at exceptionally cold weather condition at high altitude binder so we will use the binder we all know road repair work tar we use rt1 rt1 tar we will use as binder uh, but here uh, um, uh, medium curing is also given or rapid curing this two if you if you have confusion you just mention uh, I'll, I'll try to see this okay I'm not sure but RT1 is used for exceptionally cold weather only but binder or not uh, that is I am confused okay so you mention in comment section if you know the answer question number 75 limestone dust filler material is required for production of so over here we use mastic alpha uh, mastic asphalt we use the limestone dust as filler material 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी सिक्स मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ व्हीकल्स दैट कैन मूव ऑन अ रोड एट एनी सिचुएशन ड्यूरिंग वन आवर अंडर प्रिविलिंग सिचुएशन इज नोन एज सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ट्रैफिक कैपेसिटी एक्चुअली दिस इज द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ व्हीकल्स एट वन आवर ड्यूरिंग प्रिविलिंग सिचुएशन इज द प्रैक्टिकल कैपेसिटी सो हियर प्रैक्टिकल कैपेसिटी इज नॉट गिवन ट्रैफिक कैपेसिटी नॉट वॉल्यूम और डेंसिटी इट इज कैपेसिटी क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी सेवन मार्शल स्टेबिलिटी इज टू बी कंसिडर्ड फॉर डिजाइन ऑफ वी यूज मार्शल स्टेबिलिटी फॉर बिट्यूमिनियस कॉन्क्रीट ऑप्शन डी इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी एट फॉर नॉन कोहेसिव मेटीरियल्स कंपैक्शन कैन बी बेस्ट अचीव्ड बाई सो दिस इज क्वेश्चन लेस मेटीरियल्स कंपैक्शन इज बेस्ट अचीव्ड बाई वाइब्रेशन और बाई मैकेनिकल मीन्स ऑप्शन ए विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर वाइब्रेटरी रोलर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी नाइन बैंकलमेन बीम इज यूज फॉर सो यूज द बैंकलमेन बीम फॉर डिजाइन ऑफ पेमेंट ओवरले बाई डिफ्लेक्शन टेक्निक ऑप्शन डी विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी If R be the radius of main curve and L the length of transition curve, shift of curve, shift of curve formula is L by 24, L square by 24. R. Question number 81. Modulus of subgrade reaction for concrete pavement is generally determined by test with the help of modulus of subgrade reaction that is K. That is determined by plate bearing equipment. Option B is the correct answer. Question number 82. Rolling of pavement in straight and plain area. So rolling is done using from middle uh, from the edge and it proceeds towards the center at uh, center uh, and edge okay from edge it starts okay and sorry uh, this is edge and proceeds towards the center so this this part only this part this is the fourth option uh, so there is a mistake so up, only up to this uh, edge of the center and proceeds towards the center okay from edge towards the center like this rolling will start from here and it will proceed towards the center Question number eighty-three: Difference in elevation of an edge of the pavement nine meter wide and its crown is fifteen centimeter camber. So this type of simple questions or simple numericals can also come. Uh, so here we know that uh, the camber, that is uh, edge, uh, will be height will be W by two Y max. So if we find this value, so Y with this nine hundred. Centimeter, since it is given in centimeter, divided by two into fifteen. Okay, since fifteen is given in centimeter, you convert to you need to convert the nine meter to centimeter. So here you will find thirty, and so the correct answer will be one in thirty gradient, one by n. So correct answer is one by thirty. Option A is the correct answer. Question number eighty-four. Formation width of a road means the width of embankment at. Uh, so formation width is always the embankment at top level. Option A is the correct answer. Question number eighty-five. V be the speed of vehicles in meters per second. R the radius of car in meter. G the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second square. And W the width of carriageway in meter. Raising of outer edge of pavement. So uh, correct answer from here. The concept of super elevation comes only raising of outer edge. That is W V square by G R option D will be the correct answer. Question number eighty-six. Steepest gradient permitted on roads within ordinary condition is not exceeded. So correct answer is obviously the ruling gradient is the correct answer option A steepest gradient in ordinary condition okay remember it ruling gradient option question 87 correct formula for calculating super elevation on hill roads for hill roads the super elevation will be v square by 225 bar option B is the correct answer Question number eighty-eight to determine the overtaking side distance, driver's eye above road surface. So driver's eye above road surface is considered as one point two meter. Option B is the correct answer. You need to answer one question. I am asking it. Just mention in comments what is the height of an object over the road surface. This is the driver's eye, and you also need to remember the object. So you need to uh, search it or you need to answer it. So please answer. Uh, let's move on to question number eighty-nine. Bitumen stabilization is suitable for this is suitable for sandy soil and it does not give good results for cohesive soils. Okay, also used for cohesive soil but doesn't uh, give good results. Okay, because cohesive soils are full of water and they, that will water and bitumen are not okay uh, with each other. So therefore, sandy soil is the correct answer. Question number ninety. Rotary intersection. Okay. Rotary intersection, uh, the weaving length is so weaving length is the length between the ends of channelizing islands in front of two entry and exit. Option A is the correct answer. Weaving length. You need to remember the definition. That is the length between end of channelizing islands. Okay. 
let's move on to question number 91 warping stress causes so warping stress it can be both compressive or tensile but it will cause reversal of stress option a is the correct answer question number 92 when the speed of traffic flow becomes zero so if the speed becomes zero then what will be its effect on density and volume so just remember that if the speed becomes zero then traffic density attains a maximum value whereas traffic volume becomes zero option b is the correct answer question number 93 great compensation on hill road means so great compensation is uh, it will decrease the gradient at vertical it needs to so we cannot provide any great compensation since it is already a hill road so you need to decrease the gradient at vertical curve okay this is only it can be the great compensation Question number 94, dowel bars are used in rigid pavement. So, we use the dowel bars. Uh, why do we use the dowel bars? To transfer load from one slab to the next. Option C is the correct answer. Question number 95, tack coat is provided. So, why do we provide tack coat? To ensure bond between old and new construction. Option A is the correct answer. Uh, skid resistance of top surface and ingress of water into the pavement is uh, prevented by seal coat okay just remember this option a is the correct answer tag coat question number 96 while conducting traffic survey of a road see this is a very interesting question this is cu it is it has been been asked about the direct question so we all know the pcus of various type of vehicles but here a question has been given a numerical problem has been given regarding to the relating to those pcu so if you remember the pcu of or the uh, equivalency factors uh, of all those things you need to remember all of them otherwise you will not be able to solve this type of questions question or mcq may come regarding each one of them uh, otherwise it may also be asked about numerical type problems so this is very important question while conducting traffic survey of a road composition of various vehicles are found to be see number of cars is 100 number of bus is 20 number of truck is 40 now pcu you find okay equivalent passenger car unit so you see for car equivalent passenger car unit is one for bus for bus what is the for bus it is three for truck also it is three so pcu of road as per irc equivalency factor one into hundred plus twenty into three plus forty into three so if you uh, add it if you calculate it well, find option C is the correct answer. Question number 97, term vehicle damage factor. So, what is vehicle damage factor? It is the number of standard axles per commercial vehicle. Option B is the correct answer. Number of standard axles per commercial vehicle. Question number 98, maximum value of super elevation in plane train in urban road. Just remember, maximum value is 4%. So, super elevation cannot be greater than 4% for plane train terrain okay let's move on to question number 99 in winter during midday critical combination of stress at the edge of the concrete pavement so for midday winter just remember for midday winter the correct answer will be load stress plus warping stress plus frictional stress option b is the correct answer okay load stress plus warping stress plus frictional stress and for summer summer it will be minus frictional stress okay summer at the edge age only okay question number 100 if l be the length of wheelbase of a moving vehicle then mechanical widening per lane to be provided on the car so over here the correct answer is option d so per lane is l square by 2r and if n number of lanes we consider then it is nl square by 2r also need to remember the psychological widening if you remember that you please mention in comment section and Questions on numerical type problems may be asked uh, regarding mechanical widening or widening of road. So, you need to remember both the formulas, the mechanical widening, psychological widening, both of them. Questions, exam is near. Don't get confused by seeing this type of hard questions. Okay. Some of them are also, so we have seen that almost 70 to 80 percent questions are easy one. You all know. Maybe that will be conceptual, but you know the basic. If you know the basic, then you will be able to answer the conceptual type questions. And if you don't know any numerical type problems or you are unable to solve any numerical type problems also, that is not a problem. Okay. If you solve 80% of the questions, then you are going to get selected. That's not even a problem. Okay. Uh, so, this PDF, if you want, 
please join our telegram group smile and learn civil engineering and if you haven't even joined the our facebook group that is civil engineering discussion forum quickly join because over there we discuss everything admit card release and all we discuss there and we post it there any kind of job updates or any kind of updates related to civil engineering theories uh, and all formulas we we, we we try to upload it over there okay and if you haven't liked our facebook page that is my and learn civil engineering quickly like it out and if you haven't still subscribed our channel please subscribe to our channel and please press the bell icon to receive more updates such kind of updates after wbpsc ae also we are gonna post different types of uh, this type of exam questions various type of exam questions we will discuss with you and we will also discuss some theories numerical type problems